What is up guys, DZ Fear, and today I have a pretty different video from what I'm used to doing, and that is we're going to look at a dead card game and also a failed card game. This didn't actually work at all, and uh, the reason we're doing this is because I've recently been binge watching the Avatar series, the original series, the first three seasons, and uh, that's really fun. I watched that when they were first coming out, back when I was in elementary school, and then I watched it, a little bit of it, more of, of season three mostly when I was in high school, and then now I'm sort of going through all the episodes and uh, to my surprise I actually do remember a lot of them especially in the later seasons but I hadn't really seen a lot of season one anyway I wanted to find if I could do like an avatar sort of field center type deal and uh, when I was looking for that I found that there actually was a avatar card game and that's what we're gonna open in today's video now a couple things to note about this this came out in 2006 very early on and uh, what that means is that this is pretty much all season one stuff uh, season two was happening when this came out however that wouldn't really they didn't want to like spoil anything from season two so I I will give the spoiler alert that I already have opened this honestly the packaging was so like crazy that I, I when I went through the original opening I actually just struggled a lot with to open everything because of all the plastic um, so I've already seen many of these cards and yeah pretty much all of it is from season one some season two stuff is thrown in there but most of it is season one and then zero stuff from season three and uh, yeah the idea behind this is all based on this quick story strike thing which I won't really spend too much time on however it is interesting to note that the quick strike system even though it was a failure um, actually was designed by Upper Deck Entertainment which used to co-own Yu-Gi-Oh which is pretty cool but the quick strike system is kind of like Weiss Shorts basically different brands could take their different shows and they would all put the the shows card the shows like artwork and shows characters into one singular card game and uh, that idea is kind of cool I guess uh, the only three card games that I, are the only three different shows that did it I think where uh, it looks like Avatar, Shaman King, and then Pirates of the Caribbean. I guess that's a movie, so it doesn't really count. Um, but that was it. I guess it didn't really work out. This only had this starter deck, which uh, is kind of interesting for a couple reasons that we'll get to when we open it. Um, and then also they did like a one box of this set. I haven't really looked into the other two sort of IPs and how they went with this card game, how long they went for. Um, with this one at least was a pretty much a complete flop. No one really bought it. And uh, when I'm opening this thing, you'll kind of see why I'll talk about why. I've, I've, I've read some of the rule book a little bit so I kind of know what the cards do um, not really though like I wouldn't know how to play this game at all um, so this thing is a two-player starter set it includes 60 cards and two chamber cards interesting thing to note here is that the cards in here are random or at least they say they are um, after looking at them I can confirm that definitely they are random there's a couple reasons to support that but uh, you can kind of see here so two random chamber cards tw uh, two random 30 card playing decks mix and match to make it the ultimate tournament deck um, one rule book and two play mats which is pretty cool um, this really is for all intents and purposes a two player starter kit which is something we don't really see in Yu-Gi-Oh um, they usually release two structure decks at the same time so you can play against your friends um, but Pokemon and Magic both do this so it's not really super surprising um, one thing to know is that uh, they actually did create some new characters for this we'll see a couple cards of those later um, you can see this character this character not um, Zhao but this character and this character um, this like created one character from each nation there I don't know why they did that um, most of the artwork is taken directly from the TV show although a lot of it looks like it's fan art too well it's not fan art I'm sure it's just made, <laughs> made for the card game um, but it's definitely like a distinct difference between the artwork taken from the show which is really polished and then the artwork that they came up with themselves which is not um, anyway though let's open this up and uh, yeah this is like a VHS tape box very crazy I guess it's from 2006 but uh, that's exactly what this looks like you'll see when you open it up the quality is actually I was actually very impressed with this quality um, obviously I've already opened this stuff but when I got it it was brand new you can see here it has uh, a little deck box for carrying um, both of your decks in there which is kind of neat uh, and it says upper deck entertainment then we have the rule book which I'll kind of flip through and then the two plane mats um, basically like all you really have to know I mean it's I don't know so one of the reasons this this failed from what I can find online is that uh, it was really easy to pick up but not very there wasn't any like competitiveness to it and I talk about this in some live streams but basically for a card game to be good as as cliche as it is um, it really does have to 
to be easy to pick up for newer players, but really difficult to master for people that want to master it. And uh, ironically, because this card game is called Master of the... Or this, I think this set was called Master of the Elements. The card game is just called Avatar Last Airbender Quick Strike or whatever. Um, but ironically, even though it says Master of the Elements, this game apparently was not very difficult to master, um, which meant that no one really um, played this game competitively. It's actually one of the websites that I found. Um, there, there's a page section for basically like a TCG player type of thing where there were going to be like articles for the competitive game. And he uh, he added on, I don't know how much uh, after or how long he waited before adding this on, but it's actually on that page, the only post says that he overestimated how competitive or how popular this game would be, which is pretty funny. Um, anyway, though, yeah, we can kind of flip through here. Um, one thing that's pretty crazy is that these decks are completely randomized. And I mentioned this because uh, these strike cards, which are the blue ones, they, they're supposed to have these trait requirements for if you can activate them or not based on your chamber cards, which will, they're like cardboard things. You'll see them in a second. And uh, that's basically like the planeswalkers of the game, which I think actually ended up being the game's downfall as well, because that meant that you couldn't really use all the characters. Um, there's different characters on the artworks, obviously. But anyway, these trait requirements are supposed to match the uh, images on whatever chamber card you're playing and uh, in the starter decks that's it doesn't matter because like they're completely random but they actually added in the rule book it said you don't have to worry about trait requirements when playing the starter deck game which i found interesting because that this is why starter decks should be designed to like actually be a good example of like how the card game works if you think of like a pokemon starter deck what if they just threw random pokemon in there random energies and said um, for the normal card game like make sure your energy matches the attack but for the starter deck card game um, just throw whatever you want on there. It just doesn't really work that way. Um, yeah, there's some cool stuff. The, the playmat is kind of complicated when you first look at it. Uh, basically, green, yellow, and red are like your lines of defense, basically, um, for dealing with your opponent. Uh, your chamber card goes right there. And then these uh, these things on the right-hand side, these nine cards, are actually like your mana requirements. Um, different cards have a different um, color of mana requirements, so that's kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, there's just lots going on here i don't know i haven't really sat down and played or anything but from reading the rule book it doesn't seem that complicated um and many of the card texts don't really have um that many things going on for them they're just pretty much basic things um there's some stuff going on there anyway i won't uh, bore you with the play mat because you kind of already saw but we'll, we'll take a look at the decks um yeah I, like i said I, i'm impressed with the quality of like the design on these things but as far as like the actual gameplay quality can't say um for certain how good it is move that out of the way real quick um, one thing to note is that, uh, at least I said when I first opened this, um, I, I think that, I don't know, I, I haven't opened more than one of these. I didn't buy more than one, but I'm pretty sure that one of the chamber cards is always Aang. Um, it would be pretty weird if that wasn't the case, um, just because, like, I feel like someone buying the Avatar starter deck would want to get Aang, but uh, this artwork is not official, I guess. But this one is, that's from the show. And uh, But anyway, or is it? Now that I'm looking at it, I don't actually remember that happening. I don't even think that one is, huh? That's weird. It's like this one, like clearly is like a different art style. Like his head shape is all weird. Um, but what's crazy about these, what you might have noticed, and what I it took me like a whole minute of messing around with to figure out because I was breaking it. Um, you notice how it has this little lip here on the top? Well, it's actually removable. Well, you can pull it up. You can't. I guess you can remove it if you really pulled it out there. But um, it's pretty crazy. Um, so this is like the special abilities of these cards, which uh, you don't really see too often and uh, i don't know this is something that you <laughs> you just don't see like i've i've never seen a cardboard card like planeswalkers i know like have uh, just the one side but like in uh, dragon ball and in force of will you have like a planeswalker type thing that you flip around so uh, this isn't like unheard of which this one does flip around but like this i mean that's just wild um also it is worth noting that uh this stuff um is completely random on the inside well not completely random but uh there's a picture of this exact card in the rule book and the the attack thing is different so i don't know how random that is i mean both these are ang related but i don't know it's pretty crazy so kind of an interesting thing haven't really seen that before haven't really ever seen that again really i don't think anyone else did that um and then one thing that was kind of crazy is um so there is a the main box of this set which I, I might open if you guys are interested in seeing me open it kind of hard to come by but they do exist out there on ebay they'll just take a little while to get here um because these starter decks are completely random uh this one actually oh whoa I might have screwed up here but this one i don't know i might just put it somewhere else it's probably in there but this one has a holographic card that came in it that i apparently have oh there we go 
Um, this one actually had a holographic card on top. Um, the other one does not, though, because it's literally just random cards thrown in there, which is very strange. It's also very weird that the holographic card for the Aang deck is uh, Uncle Iru, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of see what's going on here. So this is like the mana requirements, green and yellow. Um, you can also use like a red mana for a yellow mana, and you can use yellow mana for a green mana. Kind of crazy, I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it looks kind of cool. Just a basic holographic thing. I mean, you have to keep in mind, it's from 2006. Uh, one thing that I was impressed by, if you've watched any of uh, Alpha Investments openings of dead card games that were all, he's opened a lot of magic knockoffs. Um, if you've ever watched those, you might notice that like, because those are not knocking off like magic from 90s like they didn't have like set numbers they didn't really look that good they were really simple on um, this one at least does have set numbers and does show um rarity there i think uh two stars is uncommon one star is common and then three stars is i don't even know what they call them um not this might be a zen metal card that's what they call their holographic card. i don't know um super yeah i guess 10 super zen metal cards i guess that's what this is uh, but that's pretty crazy that they actually have a set numbers on there and they look pretty good quality they're standard size um you can see they say quick strike on the back they do not say avatar on the back and the reason the avatar logo is plastered on anything is because their i mean upper deck's grand idea was to have all these different ips actually use the quick strike system so you'd want to have the um the actual name of the show on there anyway yeah, i thought it was kind of cool we pulled a hollow um we can kind of flip through here this is like one of the the characters they just made up or whatever but many of these cards are artworks from uh the actual show which i, I found neat it's it's, it's kind of refreshing something like this we got uh, my cabbages over here pretty fun um it's cool basically you use like the abilities of these characters um these strike cards are like the characters doing those things um and the reason that like uh it matters when you actually play the real game i guess and you use the um the traits that they have here the four i guess if you count the nation um then it's actually things that they could do like it's believable that ang can like evade something it's not believable that ang can use like a burning disc well at least not when this card game was made um so that's kind of crazy and then you have some ally cards which are these uh, pinkish purple ones they look more like purple on the camera and then you have uh, advantage cards which I are like a uh, earth color oh um, yeah that's kind of what's going on here like I said there most of the stuff you can see if you watch show pretty much all from season one that's a hilarious flashback from season one or uh yeah season one that's when he figures out he's up there um, anyway some cool stuff there blazing axe kick but uh, yeah, I think that's kind of cool. We can open the, the other one as well, Oops, as I bump the camera. Very professionally done uh, opening here. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see that, I mean, this card game, I don't know, I haven't played it, so it's really hard to judge a card game based just on looks, just like anything in life. But we have uh, Commander Zhao for the uh, the next card, Zhao, whatever, I'll pronounce that correctly for once. Um, and he's on here. One thing that I found kind of weird is, I don't remember him ever riding a rhinoceros. That was just kind of like that Rhino gang, but I don't think he ever rode one. I don't know. Maybe someone correct me on that. Maybe I didn't remember that. And then we have Open Fire, which uh, he's not even firebending in that picture, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, that was the other one. Um, so that one clearly is random. I think it would be kind of cool. Um, the Naruto starter decks used to have, like, one character on their front. I think that makes the most sense, but I don't know. What do I know? I've never made a failed card game. Kind of go through here. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. I mean, I don't know how many people are actually interested in the Avatar series at all. I don't know how many people are interested in non-Yu-Gi-Oh openings. Uh, not going to become like a regular thing. Um, but I did want to open this card. I thought it looked cool. I thought the, honestly, the, the main thing, I have Ozai. That's so weird that they would reference. That's so strange. I don't know. I guess more of these, looking through these, I guess more of these are actually not taken straight from the show. Or they're like... Ba like this is something that happened in the show like this pretty much this uh, exact angle happened but it looks like it's not the show's artwork maybe they all are original artwork i don't know some of these do look like they're straight like that looks like it's that's definitely straight from the show i don't know that's I, I would like to learn more about that but let me know what you guys thought about this opening that's pretty much gonna wrap it up hopefully you guys enjoyed it i i thought it was interesting i don't think i'm gonna like play this game probably won't do anything like that but i would like to open the box so we can kind of see uh, apparently there's 36 packs and every six packs you're supposed to pull a holographic card so that'd be pretty exciting that'd be like this uncle iro here um but yeah i'll see you guys later thank you so much for watching i know it was kind of different from my normal content um we'll just see how you guys like it i'll try to post on the same day that I post this video, a, a normal Yu-Gi-Oh! video as well. But I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.